few trailer chicks were just recently down in California and got to meet the wonderful author and chef at Jimtown store. And she gave them this beautiful autograph cookbook. And I have chosen a few incredible recipes in here today that I think you're gonna love. One of them is a maple glazed meatloaf. And then I've also chosen a really nice fall salad with pears and hazelnuts, and you can accompany it with cheese of your choice. So we're gonna make those today. I really like this cookbook because Carrie Brown, the owner, focuses on local. She focuses on her community. She has a beautiful garden. She has her own chickens. All of the meat is locally raised. And she's really kind of integrating the whole community there and the vineyards. And it's a really neat place to visit. And if you ever get the chance to go to Healdsburg, California, make sure you go to Jimtown and have a delicious meal and drop in and see Carrie. I think you'll have a great time. So this meatloaf is delicious and different. It doesn't have just the usual ingredients. It's got bacon and it's glazed with a maple mustard glaze, which is incredible. So I've started by sauteing chopped up bacon with onions and garlic, and this is really nice and sauteed. So you're gonna to wanna to do that first and then let it cool down a little bit. A mixture of ground beef and it's 10% lean, free range, really nice ground beef, and also some ground pork and the pork will give it a really good flavor and moisture and just make it a nice complex flavor. And to that, I will add about a quarter cup of crushed crackers. You could use whatever crackers you have. If you don't have crackers, you could use breadcrumbs, just something to give it a little more body. And then we have some fresh chopped parsley. I have some fresh thyme from my herb pot outside. You could use dried thyme if you have that, but fresh is always delicious. A little bit of mustard. This is just the classic dry mustard. And then Worcestershire, a little sprinkling of that. For a little heat, your favorite hot sauce. I happen to like Tapatio, but Tabasco would be great too. Then you could use a mixture of sour cream and milk. You could use a little buttermilk. This is just to kind of moisten up the breadcrumbs um, and add another layer of flavor and also kind of bind it. So just a little bit of that. I believe that is everything. And then we want to add our onion, garlic, and pepper bacon mixture. This is pepper bacon from the local grocery store. Really delicious. Cured without nitrates. No preservatives. So then we're just gonna mix that up. So now I have this, I have this mixed really well, but one last thing I need to add is an egg. I'm gonna break that into another bowl, just to make sure there's no shells or it's not a funky egg. This is a nice free range egg, which if you have the choice, I would go for a free range egg. You'll notice in the flavor and the texture, they're usually a lot fresher. They just taste richer. Maybe you have a friend who has chickens and they'll give you a few eggs, which is great. So now this is really well combined. Everything's in there. I've got the egg that'll bind it together and I'm gonna put it on the pan. Cooking in the loaf pan and the juice is boiling around it, which can kind of toughen it up. This is a great way to bake it and it bakes it more evenly and you get a more tender meatloaf. Oh, and salt and pepper, and forget that. About a teaspoon of, I'm using kosher salt and half teaspoon of ground pepper. So then you can just turn that out onto a sheet pan with edges on it. Or if you don't have that, you could use a casserole with edges to keep the juices on. And then you're just gonna shape it kind of like a loaf of bread. And meatloaf is a great thing to make because you can eat it hot from the oven, but one of my favorite things is a meatloaf sandwich. So we've got that shaped, and then I'm just going to layer. This is the good part. This bacon will add a lot of flavor. It'll keep the juices in, put some delicious smoky bacon flavor in there, and it's a pepper bacon. And then on top of that, I've mixed together um, equal parts of maple syrup and a st uh, mustard. This happens to be a stout mustard, but you could use a Dijon or your favorite mustard and then we're just going to glaze the meatloaf with that so you'll get that sweet and spicy flavor combined with the smokiness and saltiness of the bacon all those flavors in the meatloaf it's going to be like an explosion in your mouth so i'm going to place it in a preheated oven and this will take about depending on the size and how hot your oven is i have it about 375 it should take uh, about 25 to 30 minutes to cook this meatloaf. 
If I'm doing something in the oven, I want to also do whatever's going to go with it in, in the oven as well. So I'm going to do some roasted vegetables. Really neat thing that I found out about Carrie is her office is a beautifully restored vintage trailer, which I think is so cool. And it sits right in the middle of her garden. It's kind of her oasis. To roast vegetables, it's one of the simplest way to cook vegetables. You're going to use a really hot oven and it will bring out their flavors and start to caramelize any sugars in them. I have some different kinds of yams, carrots, and just some Yukon gold potatoes. And I've just combined these with some fresh herbs. We have rosemary, thyme, oregano, whatever you have, some olive oil. Cook your meatloaf for 10 or 15 minutes, put the vegetables on, and then they should all be done at the same time. So to go with this lovely meatloaf that's glazed with maple syrup and Dijon mustard and smoky bacon, I'm gonna do a salad made with pears. And pears just happen to be the state fruit of Oregon. And I was checking it out and not every state has a fruit. So I feel lucky that we have the pear because it's one of my favorites. And it happens to be in season right now. So we're gonna start by making a really nice dressing that Carrie created using dried pears. And then in the salad, we're gonna have fresh pears. So it's gonna be really delicious. And I'm using some local uh, vinegar, which is a wildflower honey. I'm gonna just tear up some of these dried pears. It's about an ounce that you want in there. And we're using this magic bullet, which is a great little small space tool that you can blend in. So we're just gonna put everything in there. We'll put some mint shallot a little bit of mustard, and this kind of goes along with the um, meatloaf. Same stout mustard, and some of this honey vinegar, which the honey I thought would be a really good complement to the pears and the hazelnuts. A little bit of salt, some pepper, and olive oil. This is a California olive oil. That just all goes in there. Screw the top on. So you just want to pulse it until it's emulsified, which means you bring the oil and the vinegar together. So with this salad, we're doing pears and also hazelnuts. So we're just going to, I'm just going to slice up the pear. So I'm just going to, I have just mixed greens here and uh, some butter lettuce. So when you're using nuts, you want to toast them gently just to bring out the flavor and it just improves the nuttiness of them. And you can do it in the oven on a sheet pan. Just for, just be careful to watch them, kind of a low temperature, 300, 350, maybe five or 10 minutes. Or you can just do them in a skillet. Gonna add those and pour on the dressing. And then we'll toss it. You can use your hands or your salad tossers. And that looks ready to go. So now we can check on that meatloaf and see if it is ready to take out of the oven. So the meatloaf is ready. It cooked to 165 degrees and the vegetables are all nice and roasted and they've got these caramelized edges and it's ready to serve. And then just a scoop or two of vegetables. You could also, I have some cheese here from Willamette Valley, which is a local cheese maker, and it's kind of a creamy brie-like cheese. Um, the salad would be really nice with bread and cheese, but I think as is, this would be the perfect meal right here with a glass of wine. For these great recipes from Jimtown Store and more information about the beautiful store in California, please check out trailerchicks.com.